First of all, let me see. You, 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 you build a system for watching the television and, and, and solving uh, Mario Level 1. Right. And, uh, and, um, and the, there's, so the solver is running on an FPGA that's watching the television signal coming off the Nintendo system. And because of, because of the cruddy uh, characteristics of the video signal coming out of the Nintendo system, the FPGA can't actually lock to it. Right, yeah. so the, the, it's, a set, it's a 240p uh, NTSC signal coming out of the NES, uh, and it's slightly malformed, which on older TVs works fine. It kind of just ignores the lack of sync. Um, but the chip that's doing the NTSC decoding on the FPGA is expecting a properly formatted signal, which just isn't, and it can't lock onto it. And, 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 this, and this, this device assumes that if it's not a proper signal, it must be some other format. Right. And so it turns it off. Well, so it, it tries to use whatever it's getting in whatever format. Right. Whatever format it is. So you had to use something, you had to use cues besides position on the screen to, to, yeah. to get stuff well, to work. We benefited because it's an entirely horizontally scrolling game. So a lot of the information we can just get the X coordinate and use that to make decisions. Mm -hmm. We also, well, one trick we use is that you notice there's a, the black bar that separates the frame. Mm -hmm. We have a method for detecting that, so then we can compare where obstacles are relative to that. Okay. But it still creates some problems because sometimes the Goomba, for example, is literally not visible at all on the screen. Uh huh. What's the what's the little gray tail or the brown tail or tan tail I see to the left of some of the? So the, there's there's three colors that we have set up for when it, when Mario decides to do things. Uh huh. They're also represented by the LEDs on the left side of the screen. Um, I see. So they, they match up. So yellow yellow means um, that he's seeing a brick or something that he needs to jump over. Although it also catches. Some and, and the on the red lines on there then are the, the indication that you're near a enemy. Enemy, yeah. Right. So uh -huh. that, that, that is checking for a color that's only found in the Goomba and the Koopa and the title screen, which it thinks is a giant enemy. <laughs> um, and then green indicates that there's a pipe, and so there's actually a, a very small yeah. number of green pixels next to each pipe. It's hard to see, though, but the LED indicates when he's trying to jump over a pipe. So we have one mode, too, where you can see... Um, so this is basically uh, just what Mario is seeing. He's looking at uh, the uh, green for the pipes, which we'll see in a minute. The yellow for the bricks and the red for the goombas. I see. So this is this is the stripped down view of what the AI is using. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh huh. And importantly, we only look at certain areas of the screen where we know things matter. So, like for example, for goomba detection, um, there's like a color that shows up only in the goombas, but it also might show up in some of the bricks. Um, but we're only looking at like a certain number of certain range of X pixels on the screen for when we want to act upon things. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing goes for like the yellow also shows up in Mario uh, in addition to the edges of walls. But we don't want Mario to keep trying to jump over himself, so we're only looking to add pixels to the right of Mario. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Should have it like actually play again. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so you hit the reset. And then we have uh, the start button on the controller is directly connected to a switch. And, and we're emulating the control. I mean, the controller on the NES is very simple. It's basically uh, an 8 bit um, parallel to serial shift register. So we basically just recreated a controller uh, and FPA, FPGA toggles buttons like you would on the controller, which go to the right. shift register, which then gets sent to the NES. Well, we got hit. So this is this is playing completely automatically. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Doesn't usually die in the first one, but. <laughs> Oh, I got caught in the... Yeah, the trap. 
that's, that's, the hard, that's the hardest part, I think, the part yeah. that it struggles with most commonly. Because we're basically just holding down the right arrow key the whole time. Just going as fast as you can and jumping when you have to. Well, we're not no, running, though. Running. So we could, we could optionally be holding down the B button to make Mario run, which we chose not to do. Uh huh. Um, because uh, we found that this was more accurate generally. But like in that example, because the screen is scrolling, the grid is completely off screen, so it can't see the marker pan. Right. So it's it's purely, you know, it's based very heavily upon the timing of when, if you get lucky with the scrolling, really. 